friend of the show, Glenn Greenwald, recently joined a panel of other political commentators, including Destiny, Alex Jones, and the Krasenstein brothers, to discuss whether or not Trump's actions on January 6th rose to the level of a coup. Greenwald took the position that January 6th was not a coup. Here he is justifying that case. If you look at how other coups are perpetrated, and I think a lot of this is that if you're an American and you have this very soft history, you don't know what a coup is, you think that like what CNN tells you a coup is a coup. Usually the way coups work is the leader of the country, whoever is in charge of the military, orders the military to seize control of the levers of power. Trump was the commander in chief on January 6th. The military was duty bound to obey his orders. They had a right to disobey if they were illegal, but if this were a coup, why didn't Trump order the military to seize control of the pow of power and turn over the election process to him? Why didn't he order the armed factions that form the, the law enforcement part of the military and the executive branch that serve under his command to do that as well? That's what happens in a coup. That didn't happen here because Trump wasn't trying to perpetrate a coup. Later in the panel, Greenwald got into an argument with left, well, with liberal streamer Destiny. Let's take a look. If you want to talk about applying the same standard, would you have been okay in the year 2000 if Gore refused to certify the vote because he didn't like what was happening in Florida? A lot of Democrats did Can want to do that. Can you answer that question? I, Glenn, answer yes, the question. Yes, and I would have actually, yes the, a lot of Democrats were angry about that. There I'm not asking if a lot of, of I'm asking you would be okay personally if he refused to certify the vote. I think there were two. There were you won't two answer arguments. the question. In 2016, Wait, would you have been okay if Biden? Hold, hold on, on guys. That Gore, one, because if you really believe that an election is stolen, as the Democrats claim they did, then it is kind of odd to say, we're just gonna concede that and allow George Bush to march into power, even though we believe that he actually stole the election. Yes, that but, is kind of an odd no, way it's to not, hold out. It's, it's, not, it's not all that all, we live in a democracy. Ed and Brian Krasenstein attempted to deflect comparisons between the Black Lives Matter riots and the attack on the Capitol, let's watch. I don't think that Black Lives Matter was an insurrection. I do think 1992 riots in LA was an insurrection. Uh, George did Herbert Black, Walker Bush. Black. What, Black Lives Matter Black, that made it not an insurrection. What did it lack? So it was a protest and the violence was when the police clashed with the protesters. The, vi the violence was not against the government in order to stop the government from doing something. There, were, there, there were an Antifa and anarchist groups there that explicitly say they were using violence to overthrow the government? That they're, didn't happen? They were firebombing federal courthouses. They're, God, you're, it's, that's not true. No, they were, fi they're, the bombs on the courthouses, there's nobody, it was at nighttime, there's nobody in there, they, <laughs> were, they were not obstructing the anything. The firefighters they got were not, excited. They, Arson's a they, serious they crime. It's a fun gathering, surprised we didn't get our invites, so sad. Well, I've had this exact debate with, uh, uh, Glenn, Greenwald, Green, Glenn Greenwald on my show, who I respect a great deal, but I do think he's playing fast and loose with definitions. Not every coup is a military coup. There is definitionally something called a soft coup, which is much closer to what's being described here. And I think that he's right that the focus on what, whatever skirmishes were happening outside of the Capitol on that given day were not the coup, any more so than, I guess, the claim that's being made here is that protests in Los Angeles in the, in the 90s somehow were tailored to overthrow the government. I think both claims are absurd. But what can be more accurately described as a coup or Trump very clearly trying to hold on to power outside of what the democratic laws of this country would dictate is him calling up several se uh, uh, elected officials in several states and plotting with them, this is what's being alleged, to put together fake slates of electors that do not reflect what the people in the state did on voting day, but different wrong made up felonious results that were then sent to the Capitol and Mike Pence was supposed to say there's ambiguity here. I'm going to certify the fake, uh, you know, I can't decide whether the fake slate or the real slate is the appropriate thing. So we're just going to pump this to Congress who, because of the distribution of Congress, would have elected Trump. That is a soft coup. That is a plan. Now, that probably has to be proven. These courts have to prove that that it was, in fact, what was taking, taking place. But that is clearly an action tailored toward making sure the, elect uh, the election results were not respected. That is not the same thing as someone trying to storm the Capitol or someone um, uh, protesting Black Lives Matter, uh, protesting the murder of George Floyd, or someone protesting um, in the LA riots, or anything like that, none of which has any connection to actually changing the power dynamic at the top of our government. Well, but it's a little similar, I think, to what Glenn said there about um, the actions in the 2000 election. Like, if you actually think it's illegitimate, are you not you know, bound to to refuse to certify fake results, and then the the 
the argument is going to, I mean, Trump is going to have to make this case, but say that, you know, he sincerely believe, you know, when he makes the call to Brad Raffensperger and other people, you know, uh, seriously thinking that uh, votes in his favor have not been counted, and he's wrong about all of that, but that the actions he's taking were to, were to rectify um, results that were illegal and, in fact, unfair to him. And then also, coup, look, you can call it a coup if you want. The, the language to disqualify Trump from the ballot is specifically, is not a coup, it's insurrection. And I think an insurrection does, if you go by like a dictionary definition, involve not just extra legal means of staying in power, but a kind of direction to a militia to use violence um, to, to hold territory and that kind of thing. Well, so that is not— the debate here is whether it's a coup, not an insurrection. Right. The word insurrection is used— But insurrection is the language in the Right, in the but the, the reason—that's re, what I'm saying, that the reason the insurrection language is used is because they're trying to bar Trump from the ballot under the insurrection clause, but that's not right. the context of this debate. This debate is about the word coup and whether or not Trump did a coup, and Glenn pretending like every coup—or I shouldn't say pretending, but Glenn defining coup as necessarily violent in the way that you could potentially do with insurrection, I think, is a sleight of hand. Moreover, it's important to know that the Trump's, Trump's wrongdoing wasn't wanting to make sure that the votes were tallied. The, the, there were um, legal efforts by Trump's team all across the country to check and double-check election results. The problem was that within, like, well before Inauguration Day, Trump's own experts, Trump's own legal advisors, Trump's own cabinet was telling him, no, sir, you lost the election. And he kept trying to look for alternative uh, experts, dismissing the people who had been a part of his team until he find someone, found someone who had gotten the right answer. So the comparison to the year 2000, if Al Gore said, let's just take a beat, let's take these next Few months before, a uh, few weeks before January 20th, to run our legal cases, see what actually happened in Florida, count and recount the ballots. That's that not would the not issue. Be a coup. No, that's not would not be the coup, and that's not, it wasn't a coup when Donald Trump did that too. What Donald Trump is being accused of doing that is a coup is not having legal. Jill Stein had a legal case to try to see what the uh, ballot results were in what Michigan or one of those Midwest, Wisconsin, one of those Midwestern states. That is not a coup. That is your legal right to engage in a legal process to see if, see if the election was held fairly and accurately. What was the problem was that Trump's advisors all told him after that happened, everything was kosher and you lost, and he continued to put into effect machinations to make the outcome in his favor regardless. Right. I mean, he's, he, he was saying that the results were illegitimate, had not been counted properly, and so there should be special—the mechanism for dealing with that is to have special legislative sessions to, 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 to throw to the legislators in the state to determine what the electors should be. No. What, yes. what, the, what the plot wasn't— Oh, I guess, He was wrong about that. The legislators that. were not saying, based on this other information that is substantiated and real, well, right. we're going to submit it's a fake state of His, elections. He's saying they made up— uh, results and we're, the plan was this is this is from I'm sorry um, I'm blocking the guy's name from the, the this is the stated plan in the in that that memo um, that the the point was the ambiguity the point was that you didn't have time in the in the fog of all of the confusion to not be able to challenge the fake state of electors which was not based on anything. And that we were going to be able to say, well, the ambiguity of having two slates here compels me well, the, to throw this to the, the house. Not that there was a legitimate basis on which the fake slate of electors come to, came to their outcome. I mean, the electors were the, the, the fake electors were going to be improper because the vote actually had been tabulated correctly the first time, and it should just be based on what the votes. And were they in the knew states. that. Well, but okay, but they, you have to prove that Trump knew that, right. that he obviously. didn't actually believe that. Obviously, but we've already had a bunch of people flip, and a bunch and of that he was actually involved in the, and that he specifically directed and organized people to take right. those actions right. on his behalf. Like I said, that that has, I said that has to be right. proven. But well. we've already had people who are conscripted into this plan say, "Oh, I thought I was only signing this as a last case scenario. I didn't think this was actually going to be submitted. I thought that I was signing this document." that was only going to be used if the recount showed that Trump had actually won, not that it was going to lie and, and, and be used to create confusion at the Capitol so that Mike Pence could justify throwing it to the House. We have people who are part of this scheme who've come out and said that. Like, I didn't, I didn't realize—I mean, they're also trying to cover their own— Behind, so grain of salt. But they've come forward and said, "Well, I, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to represent that I had some special knowledge that the tallies were any different than what you knew. All I knew was that I'm signing this in case the experts come back and say we have new numbers here. Experts did not come back and say there's new numbers here. They told Donald Trump, in fact, I know, but Trump didn't 
agree with them and didn't believe them. Right, but this is this is the problem, Robbie. If I if I tell you this cup is black, we get 15 experts in here to say the cup is black. I see I have you on camera whispering to someone else saying, I know the cup is black, but we gotta we gotta find a way to make this cup blue. You can't just sit here and maintain because my subjective belief is that this cup is a color other than black, that I shouldn't go to jail for fraudulently lying well, to the American people to, about the that's cup. That's what they have to prove. Right. But Trump's only defense is that he subjectively believed that there was fraud when everybody who was working for him and all of these I don't Republicans. Think that's such a stretch that he actually believes that. And all of these Republicans. Listen to him. He still says it. I know he still says it. And the point is, you cannot just claim. I can't right, go well, into a store and claim, well, I, I thought I'd already paid for all of these items and walk out and steal. At a certain point, your subjective belief in the face of all of the evidence to the contrary and some tacit acknowledgement that you know better, frankly, in some of, in some of these cases, in some of this reporting, is not enough to protect you. And so that that is what the coup is. I agree with Glenn insofar as the people breaking into the Capitol were not the coup. That was not a coup, any I would more just so say than any protest. Trump exhausted every legal means and then some questionably legal and perhaps extra legal means to stay in power for which he's being prosecuted. Coup goes a little far for me, and insurrection goes very far, but we will see if the court agrees. More rising right after this.